Need to have peace in my soul. Need to have peace to make me whole. If peace on earth begins with me, I'm gonna need to have a little empathy. I need to have peace in my soul. My name is Kara. I'm your Tuesday host here on Pagan Perspective, and this week we're talking about empathy and magical defense. That song is actually one that a woman at my church wrote, and we sang it this past week at church, so I just thought that would be enjoyable. I stayed home from work today because I'm sick, so my voice is probably going to be kind of scratchy, and I'm going to try and get through this quickly because it is late on Tuesday. I planned on doing it a lot earlier since I stayed home, but I've been sick, so this is really the first opportunity I had because I'm not currently asleep or coughing like crazy. Of course, right after I said that, I started coughing, and then my voice just started doing really terrible things, so I'm going to try to get through this with a voice. So according to Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary 10th edition, empathy can be defined as the imaginative projection of a subjective state into an object so that the object appears to be infused with it, or the one that's more appropriate for this use, the action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experience of another, of either the past or present, without having the feelings, thoughts, and experience fully communicated in an objectively explicit manner. Also, the capacity for this. Sometimes people think of empathy as being a strictly magical thing, such as someone being an empath, being a very specific special power that the individual has. I personally believe that empathy is something all people are capable of. Some people just don't pay as much attention to it, which is kind of the same as I feel about a lot of what people consider magical powers or special gifts. I think that everyone is capable of all of those things, but some of us pay more attention to it and use it more than others. But I think empathy is one that a lot of people experience without knowing how to use it properly. So I will be taking some of my own advice after this as well. The questions are in the description, so please read the full context. The first question asked about how empathy can impact us spiritually, mentally, and physically, and whether it can be mistaken for illness by other people. From a spiritual standpoint, I think that empathy can affect us spiritually because as far as spirituality goes, for me at least, it's about recognizing the entire web of existence and our connections to other people, and I think being empathetic to other people really helps spiritually because we're understanding the other people that we share life with, the people that we are connected to. Mentally, I think empathy can affect us in a positive way because, like I said, knowing how other people are thinking helps us have a different viewpoint, and I think that's a very positive thing, looking at it from a different point of view. I also think that it could be negative if you're always feeling negative emotions from other people. And physically, if you feel too much of what other people are feeling without being able to distance yourself from it or disconnect from it, you can actually start physically feeling that for yourself, and it's no longer being empathetic, but you've actually developed the issue, which can be really unhelpful. As far as it being mistaken for illness, it could if you personally develop the issue. Which actually, at that point, it wouldn't be mistaken. It would actually be that you have developed the illness. But I don't think that if it is just empathy, anyone w would mistake it. Because I think people understand that, as human beings, we have that propensity for feeling what other people feel. And so, I mean, a lot of people talk about like sympathy pains and stuff like that. I think we know that humans have this tendency to feel for other people and understand what they're feeling. So I don't think it would be mistaken for an illness unless you actually did exhibit it yourself. Which is entirely possible if, like you said, you can't control it or don't know how. So the next question about defense actually I think touches on that. The second question asked about magical defense in daily life, and then they also wrote back later asking just about defense and mental combat, which is a term that I don't resonate with. But um, defense implies that something has already happened, so we're talking about defensive measures, not necessarily offensive ones. We're talking about what to do to deal with something that you've already experienced, which can be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. If something physical happened, magic might not be the, mes the best. Oh, I can't even talk because of this. Uh, magic may not be the best immediate answer, and you need to go to the proper resources for help, whether that be the police, the doctor, the hospital, whatever the physical thing is, um, if it's a physical issue, there are different 
courses of action to take. You could also seek a resource for mental, emotional, or spiritual trouble, such as talking to close friends or family or a counselor, but some issues do have magical or mental defenses that we can use. So some ideas for that would be, the first thing I think of is cleansing. Cleansing negative energy from an area can help you to move out those things and energies that keep bothering you and keep you in that negative state in order to make room for positive healing energies. You can also cleanse yourself or your thoughts, if not the actual space around you. Any type of cleansing, whether it be water, salt, a mixture of the two, sound, or just visualization. I know for me, if I feel that there's too much negative energy in a space, I want to get rid of that by sprinkling water and salt, or smudging with sage is a favorite for me, or just by drumming and ringing bells, or going around the room and clapping really loudly, just something to make it feel like the negative energies are gone and now positive things can take place. Another thing would be positive thinking, as simple as that. You can defend yourself against the effects of negative thinking by just turning it around and looking at the positive aspects. Just focusing on the positives, repeating positive words or phrases, or visualizing positive things in your life. And that is a very simple way to keep from causing yourself more harm by just focusing in on that bad stuff, and then that just replicates itself and you get stuck in this cycle. So a very simple way to turn things around is just to start thinking positively. The next thing actually goes along with that, which is Triggers, a book that I'm working through on shadow magic, which I've mentioned several times. In the shadow of 13 moons, one of the activities is to program triggers for yourself so that when something that you consider a negative shadow aspect of your own emotions comes up, you can perform a physical trigger to remind yourself to think about the positive aspect. So for example, if anger is something that you feel is a really negative thing in your life that you want to start turning around, then you would think of a trigger. It could be something as simple as putting your hands together, clasping your hands, something that you associate with the opposite of anger. Say, in this case, remaining calm. So. Let's say if I were to get angry, I would, do, I would do the trigger and think calm. And that would remind me to turn anger into calmness. Anything like that. That was one of the activities. So I chose four things for myself. You know, make a list of those negative things that really bother you when they come about and just try to notice when they happen and turn that around. And then the last thing that I thought of is just breathing. It's really important to take deep breaths in order to calm down from a situation, really take stock of what's going on. Or even like in times where I just start feeling really sick or uneasy in different places or, or when I'm angry or when I'm sad, it, it works for everything. Just taking deep breaths and really kind of centering yourself again. Obviously it depends on what has happened to you and what you want to defend yourself from, but I think all of those things can kind of be used on their own or in combinations as a starting point for finding something that really works for you. Keeping alert and aware and paying attention to what you're feeling is really important because if you don't realize that you're feeling a certain way, how are you going to fix it? Denying or pushing away your feelings won't help you as much as recognizing, acknowledging, and then working through those feelings. And I firmly believe that. Based on my own experiences in the past couple of years, I can tell you it's a lot better to, you know, cry about something or get angry about something and let it push through and then move beyond it rather than ignoring that it's there and just hoping it'll go away because it won't. So however you need to acknowledge and work through things in a healthy, positive, safe, constructive way, do that. Of course these things can also be used as offensive measures before anything even happens, but they do also work as defensive measures, so it's never too late. You can definitely do things sort of as a preventative, you know, do protection magic and things like that so that nothing does happen to you, but if something has already happened, it's never too late. That's all I have to say this week, and I can't really talk much longer anyway. I know this sounds ridiculous as it is, so thank you very much for watching. I will see you back here in two weeks, because next week we have the subs, who still don't know who they are because we're having trouble uh, with the voting, counting, and everything. It's been tough, but we'll try to get that in the next couple of days here before the weekend starts, obviously, because people are going to need time, and I am very sorry for the delay. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, and stay healthy. Okay, bye.